fitness. Um, welcome to unit one, I think. Right, um, psychedelic neuroscience. Here we are, here we are, here we are, here we are, here we are. Right, um, so I guess before we kind of get into the, the nitty gritty of psychedelic neuroscience, um, I gave a, a, a detailed kind of overview of, of the structure of the course in the, in the trailer. So please go back and watch the trailer uh, so I, I'm not going to go into, into that much detail, but I thought I'd give you a bit of a heads up of, of kind of where we're going because we're going to start um, talking at a very kind of basic neurobiological level, and there's a there's a danger if you if you just watch the first kind of two three units, you're thinking, well, this is supposed to be about drugs, man. Where are the drugs, man? Where are the fucking drugs, man? Yeah, um, but the drugs are coming. The drugs will get will get to the drugs, but. Yeah. Psychedelic neuroscience is, it, it, it's, it's complicated, man. It's complicated, yeah? And um, it's, it's gonna, there's gonna be kind of a lot of groundwork that we need to cover. You know, I, I want you to develop a really kind of deep understanding of, of these drugs and, and how they work in the brain. Psychedelic drugs, they, they change your reality. You swallow, um, munch down some magic mushrooms, and your world changes. Um, the world changes from being this kind of very stable and familiar world um, to being this incredibly fascinating and unstable and fluid and magical kind of world. Um, and at higher doses, not only the world outside of you or the world you experience, uh, your environment kind of changes, but also your sense of self changes as well. You know, everything changes. Um, so to explain that, you, we, we really need to go into quite a lot of detail um, about, about, about psychedelic neuroscience, which means going into detail about, about neuroscience, basically. So please bear with me these first two, three units um, and you know, stick with it because it will pay off, believe me. There's, there's nothing in these early units that isn't really important. So don't skip units and think, oh, I'm not interested in that. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. Yeah, don't do that, for goodness sake, because I will be referring back as well um, to a lot of the stuff that I cover in the earlier units. So I, I highly recommend, if you want to make the most of this course, to, um, to take it one unit at a time. Okay, I think we're ready to go. Okay, so, okay. Um, we're going to start in this first unit by talking about um, basic fundamental neurobiology. So that means thinking about the brain. Here's the brain. Now we're going to be interested in um, a particular part of the brain. So we're not, uh, this is not a kind of a, I'm not going to give a detailed lesson on, on all the different parts of the brain that would take an entire course and more on, on, on its own. So uh, we're going to look at a a thin layer of the brain, you know, quite literally. Um, so here we can see um, a slice through the brain. Um, this is kind of like this, um, this kind of slice. And you can see the, the brain has this thin gray outer layer in this image, and it's actually called gray matter. Um, and that part of the brain is called uh, the cortex. And for pretty much, all of this course, we're going to be talking about uh, the cortex or the, the cerebral cortex, which is particularly large uh, in humans. I think its total area is like one and a half square feet or something like that. So it's, it's quite a big structure, but of course it's, it's, um, it's heavily folded. Um, and psychedelics primarily, not exclusively, not entirely, uh, but primarily uh, work uh, or have their, their mechanism of action within this thin outer layer of the brain. So that's what we're going to focus on. Um, first of all, we're going to kind of dig deep into the cortex and actually look at what it's built from. Um, now, if you were to look at a piece of cortex under a 
microscope, you might see something like, like this, which is this kind of densely kind of, oh, dense kind of tangle uh, of cells. And these cells are called uh, neurons. Um, now, okay, let's go to the board and actually have a look at these neurons in a little bit more uh, detail. Okay, so here we can see a, uh, this is a microscopy image of a neuron. Um, and it's, it's, it's a cell, you can see this kind of bulbous, actually let's, um, let's draw this up a little bit. So you can see this has this kind of bulbous region here, this is the, the, called the cell body. Uh, and then you have these kind of projections of, of, of membrane that are, that are coming out like this, and they are often quite heavily branched. Um, so let's have a look actually at a simpler diagram. So this is a diagram I drew of a neuron showing the, the key components. So as I said before, all neurons have this central structure uh, called, as my writing on here, so bad, uh, called the cell body. And this is really the, the hub of the neuron. This is the, the computational center of the neuron. And there are these uh, projections, membrane protrusions that come out of the cell body, um, which I've put arrows on here for reasons that will become clear shortly. Um, these are, this one here, these are called dendrites. And dendrites, as we will see, are responsible for bringing information into uh, the cell body, which is why I've got the arrows pointing into the dendrites. And you can see the number of arrows here. So this cell body of this neuron will be receiving information perhaps from many other neurons. And we're going to look in detail at how that works. And then every neuron also has another often much larger, often much longer uh, projection called the axon. Now often this will be uh, branched as well, not generally as heavily branched as the dendrites. In fact, the dendrites often referred to as a dendritic tree because they're often heavily branched. And, and how branched they are will depend upon the type of neuron. There are many types of neuron uh, in, in the brain, um, but with, this is kind of a prototypic kind of stand, bog standard old, old neuron that we're drawing here. Um, at the end of the axon, you've got this bulbous region here. This is called, I have space, the bouton. Yes, it's a French word, so you have to say it with a French accent or nobody will understand what you're saying. The, more specifically, the synaptic bouton. C'est bon le bouton. Vive la bouton. Here he is. Um, now, at this point, don't worry too much about the, um, the function of these, but you should be aware of the, the basic anatomy of the neuron. Okay, so, why am I talking about neurons? Well, as I said before, the, the cortex is constructed from very, very, very large numbers of these neurons, and they're heavily interconnected to form this dense network. And neurons are, in the simplest terms, the information-generating cells of the brain. I'm saying that slowly and deliberately because it's really important the information generating cells of the brain. Now in unit three, four, I think, we get to the idea that you, your, your own personal subjective reality, the world you live within, is constructed from information. And that information is generated by these neurons. And we're gonna look in detail at exactly what I mean by that. You know, what do I mean by information even? We'll cover that in unit two. Um, and so what psychedelics do is change the information generated by your brain. And it's that change in information that manifests as this change in uh, consciousness, this change in the structure of your reality, which is characteristic of 
the psychedelic state. And it might be quite subtle if you've taken a, you know, maybe a, gr a gram of dried mushrooms, or it might be astonishingly dramatic and you're kind of thrust into this bizarre alien world and there's kind of elves bursting uh, out of the walls if you've taken you know, the third hit uh, of, of DMT, for example. Um, but all of it will ulti ultimately be explained in terms of information, which is why I'm kind of stressing this idea of information, this, this stage to kind of get that into your head. Anyway, so what do these uh, neurons do? Okay, I'm going to try this. Um, let's see if I can... So I want maybe to, you to hear this. Oh, thank you. Um, so this is a... So let's have a look here. So... Mm -hmm. Let's clear that. So this is a recording from a uh, neuron. So at the moment you can see these, but actually let's play it. Um, hopefully you can hear this. Put this near the mic. You're going to let me. Yeah, almost. enough of that. Um, so what you were hearing there was this kind of this kind of crackle um, and this was the neuron firing. Um, and we'll talk about what I mean by firing later. Um, so that's why you're hearing this this kind of this kind of crackling or popping sound because the the neuron is firing very very quickly. Some neurons can actually fire um, up to 250 times per second. So this is very, very fast, which is why it sounds just like a crackle. Um, now, it's pretty um, intuitive, I think, to think that, okay, that this crackle, these little pops and uh, popping sounds can somehow uh, represent information, right? Uh, you might be come to mind, you know, perhaps the ones and zeros of a computer, you know, <laughs> um, or, you know, an old telephone line or, you know, when you used to connect the computer, um, you know, using it, you don't remember that now, no, whatever. Anyway, <clears throat> um, so clearly um, it, it's kind of obvious that perhaps this can represent information, but we, we need to be, we need to do a lot better than just say, oh, there's information in there. We need to um, develop a really kind of deep understanding of, of, of why that is information and why that's, that's so important. So we're actually going to look at what the neuron is doing there uh, and why that is information. Um, so that was just kind of a hint. Okay, so let's actually look at what this neuron uh, was doing there. So here we can see, and this won't necessarily make much sense to you um, at this stage, but it will. It will soon. Um, so this is what's known as, and I'll write this because it's important. Um, um, and action potential. Or sometimes simply referred to by those in the know as a spike. Why is it called a spike? Because it looks like a spike. Um, and each of those little crackles that you heard on that recording um, and you could see on the screen um, was a, one of these action potentials. It was the neuron firing uh, an impulse, an, 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 ele an electrochemical impulse uh, called the action potential. So since the action potential is the, um, the way that the neuron generates and encodes information, uh, we really need to understand the action potential. So this is, this is where we get a little bit um, technical, I guess. But I think, I think it's quite important um, that you, you, you kind of understand the action potential. And, and later on in the course, when we get to like unit six and seven, uh, we're actually going to be, uh, um, you know, that's when we really get into thinking about psychedelics. We're actually going to utilize this principle to really understand psychedelics so 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 don't skip over this and think oh this is kind of kind of a bit boring stuff it's actually really 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 important okay 
Um, right, so let's have a look at what this action potential is. So you can see on the screen here uh, a, number of, a number of things. So first of all, the most obvious thing you can see is this red line, which I'm going to draw over now. There we go. Up and then down and then back along here. So this is the action potential. And what it actually is, is a change in something called the, the membrane potential of the neuron. Um, now, again, we'll get to exactly what I mean by that. So don't worry too much at this stage. But clearly, we just want to go through kind of the anatomy of the action potential first. And then we'll actually look at, at what it is. Um, so a single action potential is a spike. And we can see uh, on this graph, so this is time here, each action potential actually lasts about one millisecond. So it's very quick. Um, and you can see we start, we have zero here. Um, the action potential seems to start kind of in, in the negative range. Uh, so it's right down here. This is called the resting potential. Again, we'll talk about that. Um, the resting potential, again, is about minus 70 millivolts. Um, and then you can see it rises rapidly, shoots past the zero up to around 40 millivolts, and then very, very quickly, just as quickly, comes all the way back down, uh, kind of overshoots a bit here. Uh, and then seems to settle back to where it was before. So it's this kind of cycle up, down, uh, and back to its original starting place. So each action potential is one spike. So every time the neuron fires, this is what's happening to it. It's firing one of these uh, electrochemical impulses. Okay, so that's the basic idea of an action potential. Um, I think we'll have to leave that there. In the next video, we're going to talk about how the action potential is actually uh, constructed. See you next time.